And we're back. Um, okay, it's been two weeks. Yep. We trimmed down your toe spacers. Yes. You had me start wearing them to work. Yes. When I got my shoes, which I did do. So I was putting them on at 6.30 in the morning and taking, I could only handle until about 8 or 8.30 at work. Uh-huh. But the pain got worse every day. Uh-huh. We went to a wedding last weekend and I wore a wedge and then I danced for five hours like I like to do. And then by Monday, I put, I put the toe spacers on in the morning and I probably should have just like disregarded the day and called it a wash because at work, my whole foot was pins and needles. <laughs> cool. From the ball up. So all this was pins and needles on both feet. Mm-hmm. I just stopped wearing them for Tuesday and Wednesday of this week to give my feet a rest because they were pulsating <laughs> and just super achy. Like uh, my feet always hurt after dancing. So mm-hmm. then I put them on today at night and last night and they've been okay. So what, how long are you wearing them now? Just uh, tonight, it's probably been an hour and a half. And last night was just 45 minutes. Did they hurt? And that's why you took them off? Yeah. That my ball of both metatarsals are killing. Like even right now, right here. I'm trying to walk normally. Like I know how I'm supposed to be walking now. And that wasn't hurting me before. And now it's killing. It's like, I just feel all my metatarsals hit the floor every time I, I step down. It kills. Yeah. That's why I took them off early yesterday. Okay. So grab your foot. Yep. Find the joint, your MPJ, right? Your metatarsal phalangeal joint. And I'll just say this for anybody who doesn't know where that is. It's like the ball of your foot is your big toe MPJ. Yeah. A lot of people have like dropped metatarsal heads from wearing a a heel drop shoe. So you can find them really easily is all I'm trying to say. Okay. So the ball of yours, right? The ball of your foot under your first MPJ, is that tender to touch? No, not at all. Is your second one tender to touch? A little bit. Not bad. Just go through all of them. No, it's the fourth and it's like actually popping out. Like you can see a bulge where my fourth. Yeah, so that's like dropped the most where you can visibly see it. Yes, you can see it. Get your hand around that joint like this. Where? On the sides? No, hold like the top and the bottom of that joint. And then you're going to push it upwards, like towards the top of your foot. The dorsal surface of your foot this way. Like if this is your joint... Oh, from the... You're on the bottom of it, and you're pushing upwards this way. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, God, it's like popping back into place. (laughs) Oh, God, it actually popped. Don't try to manipulate it or anything, but just, like, gently pulse it up and down. Yeah, I can feel it. It's, like, moving back into place. Yeah, gently. But, so do that. You do that, like... 20 times or so slowly and then try to do it to the fifth one also and really all of them i'm sure they all would need it just feels so weird i have a good idea yeah Yeah. oh oh, that's so gross look at it so your exercises remember the mobility drills with the ball there's one of them specifically for that where you like your foot is on the like the lacrosse ball the mobility ball and you're just pushing your foot from that point right onto the ball right oh so i could just be doing that yeah which is the same as pushing my finger yeah you get a little more detailed with your own hand but it's the same thing the same principle i have been rolling them out a lot (laughs) yeah but now you need to go to the individual areas and actually try to get it to mobilize upwards yeah and i think i talked about this before that we may want to consider a metatarsal pad yes i would like that yeah so take those metatarsal heads especially the fourth and the fifth like maybe just put it on the fourth and the fifth and it'll get them aligned straight yeah so you don't feel like you're walking on your metatarsals is it the same on both sides Um, four and five now I'm not having a lot of pain, but if you even with the new shoes, I feel like with the toe spacers on and the new shoes that they're rubbing on the sides of the feet, or it could just be because I have a sock on and the toe spacer on, it just feels like I'm wearing a cast all the time. Yeah, you'll get used to it. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> it's funny. I put these on today and I like look. This area looked like it was dropped. It is. It can. Yeah. It may also behoove us to try to take your orthotic out. Oh, God. I'm so scared. I know. I am, too. <laughs> but it would at least get you out of your heel drop, you know? Like, that orthotic is just pushing you onto your metatarsal heads. And that's not a good thing. However, I have a pad. You know I have a metatarsal pad, though, in there, so that might be building it back up again. Metatarsal pad on the orthotic? Yeah, she put one in for me. Can you get your orthotic? Yes. 
Get both of them. Wait, where's the metatarsal pad? So it's not even under the fourth and fifth. No, it's under two, three, and four, probably. It's not. It doesn't even come close to it. It's like pushing yeah. up, pushing up like right here. Right. So then it's still like letting the metatarsal head drop down. Right. But I was just going to have you stand on them. And yeah, I think you would have to have like a full length orthotic with the, the whole metatarsal thing in there. It's funny. I mean, it did work, whatever. Uh, I was having crazy pain in the morning and I thought I had a neuroma growing and she was yeah. like your transverse arch is fallen too so let's put a pad in there to like build up and back up yeah it should be like right where the joint is where all where it flexes right do you have like metatarsal pads of your own that you I have bought them yes I don't know if I have any right now if if you go to the store and buy a metatarsal pad or just like just modify it like cut it down just the heads of your metatarsals okay i think i would just go all the way across well of the two three four five okay and see how that feels take the orthotic out because i kept thinking when you said i have a metatarsal pad i just assumed it was a full length orthotic now but since it's not you can do both yeah i don't think you should just quit cold turkey however it's obviously going to continue if you have that heel drop in it mm -hmm. and that makes sense like when you were wearing shoes with a like a wedge heel, mm -hmm. like that's exactly where your weight is distributed, like right on your trouble area. Yeah, and it took me like three days to recuperate from that. Yeah, you're still recuperating, really. I can't move my left toe anymore. Remember, I could move it a little oh. bit. I, I'm getting like angry at it and I keep yelling at my toe. Don't get mad at it. This is what happens. Highs and lows. You know what I got good at was walking. Oh, before you started dancing? No, even now I've been doing it. Oh. And I don't fall over. Like the first two days I did it, my balance was so poor. It was ridiculous. Yeah, we saw that. I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and now I can actually walk. So that, I mean, I don't, I don't take more than one step. I'm just doing what you told me to do. Yeah. But I can take the step back and keep my foot straight. I kept going out to the side. That's good. Yay. Look at you. So I did, I did do good with that. Or do you, so do you just not wear the toe spacers when you're doing it or you did? I would just oh. like meeting with the kids and, and do it. Or I'd be like walking down the hall and then all of a sudden I'd stop and do it. <laughs> oh, Cool. You're like in a music video. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm going to put you to bed. No, I'm not. <laughs> am I coming? Am I going? <laughs> okay, well, that's good. But your toe yoga? Toe yoga on the left is poor. Still. The toes are pretty good. Look at they can move now a little bit. Yeah. Yay. But man, I cannot get that big toe up in the air to save my life. You Isn't got it? that before. It's not like it's gone. You just have to focus on it again. So did we add the band around your toes? No. Well, let's try that. Uh, put the put the band around your big toes. Oh my God! Together. Well, let's just see if this will help assist them. So now pull pull your feet apart. Go wherever's normal, but don't pigeon toe. Look it. Yeah. Do your left one. Yeah, but my my second toe comes up with it. It's okay. It will get better. You couldn't do it at all before. No, but it's so frustrating. You're doing it right now. I Second toe is coming up. And so I sit there and I yell at my second toe and I push it down and I'm like, get out of here. Oh my God. You need positive messaging for your toes. Those poor toes have not been given a job. They're just like dogs. They need to feel like they have a job. <laughs> <laughs> they need to be loved and important. Yeah. You need to stimulate them and make them feel like they know what they're doing. And right now, they have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> oh, this one's not doing anything. Kidding. Stupid. It's Look. pretty good. It's better than before. I just like doing this one because it, it actually works. Bam! Well, then always do the right one first. Go do 10 of them quickly on the right. And keep your second toe down. This one, I, I, I can tell this toe to stay down and it will. Yeah. I can activate that. But this foot, it's like, I can activate it, but like this, this is like attached to it. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be for long. Okay, so you're saying it's okay that that's coming up? Yeah, but try your best to, to keep it grounded as you pull up the big toe. Because you can lift the big toe, but at the same time, see if you can give it a second command of little toes down. You know what I want to do? Let's try this. Do you have like a little face cloth nearby or like anything small that you can put under your foot? I want it to go under the whole foot. Oh, like your socks? Yeah. 
two of them? No, just roll up one of them. Underneath this foot? Yeah, so now get it under your metatarsal head. So you're like kind of hanging off. Yeah. Now try it. <clears throat> Come on. I know. We took the ground away from your toes because that might be a little too high. Maybe if you unroll it once. Come on. Look at my ankle like engages and then nothing happens. <laughs> so even less. Do a smaller roll. Just like fold the sock in half. I got nothing. Ugh! <laughs> well, don't get too frustrated. Have other tricks that we could try. I thought maybe by holding it down, I could get it to learn to go up on its own. Like by going. Yeah. Like yeah, like I do that with patients, and even just like blocking the toes from your vision kind of helps. Oh, okay. But but then you have to like be thinking about pressing your toes down. Yeah, and then I was like, if I can push it down, and then I can just push it there. Ugh! <laughs> And then hold that up in the air. I mean, that's down, isn't it? It doesn't feel like it's down. That's not down. Ugh. It's like this. <laughs> feel in between that first and second metatarsal. Is it tender? Go all the way up. All the way. Oh, it's a little tender way, way up here. Oh, there's something in there popping. Yeah, go all the way up. Go, like, really slow all the way up the whole thing. Oh, there's stuff popping in there. There's like lots of tendons and uh, nerves. <laughs> and then keep going all the way up to like your pant line. Feels nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. And now while you do that, try to press your toes down into the ground. Especially the second one. It's very tender right here. Yeah, keep going all the way up then. All the extensor muscles. Okay. You can see, and then they run up, like, the side. Right. right. Yep. It's on, the like, the lateral side of your tibia. Now you know that, like, all those muscles go all the way up, and if they're really tender, which I would assume the whole, your whole leg. <laughs> that was so nice. The whole bottom portion, at least, <laughs> surrounding your tibia, all of those muscles would be pretty tender. Yeah. We have to get your flexors stronger so they actually stay on the ground. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to keep doing that. <laughs> you can even lay on the ball when your hands get really tired. <laughs> Just Ooh. lay on the ground on your stomach and put oh. the ball under your shin. Yeah, and roll it out. Or you can even kneel. You could kneel on the ball because you'll have your whole other leg to support you too. It won't be that bad. And then without the ball, do like this, the surface of the foot. Okay. Then hopefully we can get things to drop down enough. Yeah. And you'll put in the metatarsal pad. So then maybe things will start shifting a little bit. I mean, ultimately that bone, those bones, them bones, <laughs> the joints are never going to stay there unless you, they have support. Right. So they have to get strong. I keep going back to this. So if you stand up and you take that ball and you put it in between your heels. Okay, so now pick up the ball and put it in between your heels. People put this in different places. I don't love it right here, so we'll see how you feel about it. Uh oh, okay. It feels like I'm about to lose it. It's hard for everybody. But actually, no, pick it up and put it up into your heels, like right under your malleoli. Or, Un or try there. You can do it above the malleolus too. Get your feet totally parallel with each other. Don't pigeon toe, though. And don't, like, super squeeze the ball. Just kind of, like, let it sit in there. Okay. I'm squeezing my knees together. That's so bad. Get into your good posture. It's going to roll out. <laughs> <laughs> Put it somewhere where you feel like you can actually hold it. But then you have to just make sure that you're not using, like, your inner thighs. To oh. So now, splay your toes. Did you lose the ball already? Yes. <laughs> Play first and then put the ball in. Okay. Play. All right. Ball in. Okay. Hold on to that ball and now do a heel raise and really push through your big toes. Try not to push through the outside. <laughs> Don't what? Push through my toes? Do do push through your toes. Oh, oh, oh. Mainly through your big toes. Those. Don't sorry, I said don't push through the outside. Playing ball. And we may need those toe spacers, but we'll see. And I'm holding on. 
Yeah. Here now, stay up there. Can you go up any higher? Are we there? Yeah. And now give that ball a squeeze. And now come back down. I'm a pro. You did one. Okay, so let's try to at least do ten. Oh, my God. This is going to be a good time for you to watch what your left foot does after. I think this is ten. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. You got about seven more. I lost count. Are you counting for me? No. Oh. I've always wondered why my toe bends backwards like this. So it ends up being like a muscle asymmetry. Basically like the extensors and the flexors mm -hmm. of both sides, you know. Mm -hmm. There's like a longus and a brevis for both. Oh, yeah. And there's an asymmetry of those. So like the brevis is stronger than the longus or vice versa, depending on like what the issue is. That is why. And so we're trying to get everything strong so that when you push up, everything stays straight. I'm up. Because like right now, you should only be using your toe flexors to push in. But clearly there's extensor going on in there that's popping the toes up into like the claw position. Dr. Claw. We have to start somewhere. Like we can't just like get your toes perfect, but we have to do it regardless because you have to get that foot stronger. So that's your new exercise. Oh, I like it. And you're going to do three sets of 15. Okay. And don't look at your toes. Like try to stand in front of a mirror maybe when you do it. Okay. If you want to look at them, because it is good to see what's happening. Yeah. But ba basically your whole, your, all your toes on the left are like, curling I know. because of that asymmetry and the right isn't so bad it's oh. definitely a, a little easier when you wear the toe spacers because they force them to stay straight but they can still easily just like curl up if they want to so i should do this with toe spacers on you're saying yeah it doesn't make that big of a difference but it helps yes let's watch you walk because you're proud of it it's too it's too late you don't want to see it <laughs> no i do tell me when to go go i can't do it anymore <laughs> I'm stepping. Oh, we're doing it on the left. I see. Okay. I'm stepping. I know what's happening for a minute. I'm stepping. And I don't even fall over. Good. Now think about the way that you're landing on the on the right foot. Try to land on the heel and have the everything flexed. Like, like this. flexion. Yep. And then when I lift up, do you want... I didn't know how to lift up. I was just lifting up like a pancake. <laughs> yeah, that's how you roll. Yeah, do get into dorsiflexion like normal if you were going to step off of that. Yeah, and then you'd land on the toes and then onto the heel. Land on my heel. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like you're walking. You're walking, and then you're like, oh, just kidding. I'm going back. And I'm walking. And is your arch staying pretty, pretty good on that left side, do you think? No. Okay. <laughs> it's killing me, which is good. You said that oh, was good. Yeah. Okay, you want to do my right? Well, you don't seem impressed. I'm just watching. Everywhere. Did you want me to be cheering the whole time? Good job. You did a good job. Never. <laughs> That was really good. All right. You were going to massage all your extensors and your anterior tip muscle. Yes. Your shins, basically. Everything lateral to the shin bone. Yes. Ready. And you're mobilizing your metatarsal, metatarsal heads with the ball and by hand, if you so choose. Yeah. And you're going to do your post-tib heel raise. That's what that heel raise was, by the way. Posterior tibialis, fun fact, is on... The entire gait cycle. So that muscle needs to be super strong Where throughout your gait cycle. It runs now medial to your shin, to your tibia. Yep. It's a long, skinny muscle. It comes down. That's, I was pointing to my screen like you could see me. <laughs> yeah, and it comes right around your malleolus and then along your navicular. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, and then it splays out to all your toes. So it's like a huge player in gait. But also in like your transverse arch building. Oh. And, and so that's why I said, forget it. We're going straight to posterior tibialis right now to try to strengthen it. Okay. We got to strengthen something. <laughs> we are. 
You just saw your arch and how it was burning just by stepping. It's true. Isn't that sad? Just by walking. Uh, we should have named this series and you thought your foot sucked. <laughs> Do you feel content or are you really sad? Nope. I like my new exercise. Do I need to keep walking or no? Yes. Keep walking. Did we ever say to do single leg balance like that? No. Oh, leg, oh, with my dome? You could do like a three-way hip kick. Three way, like front, side, and then back. Yep. And you don't even have to go far. Just like little kicks if you want. Whatever it takes to hold your balance. Yeah, this kills. Good. So you got your work cut out for you, yes? Yeah, I have a lot of exercises. Okay, thanks. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming by. Where Everybody my... say bye to Rachel's pigs. Say bye to my fourth metatarsal poking out at you. <laughs> all right. Good luck with all your exercises. Good luck to my feet. <laughs> Till next time. 